Christmas Eve, we settle in to hear the Christmas story told once more. And we long to hear of angels leaning near the earth, of a small, unimportant town with a tiny inn. We long to hear of a little obscure family, a man and a woman and their baby boy. And I know that we all sit here this evening again wanting to hear that story. And so tonight, I'd like to tell you that story again. The night when God crawled to us as a baby. The Holy Gospel, according to God. There's a man in tonight's Gospel that I'm going to call Juan. And Juan is a bit of a melding of a few people I know, or have met, or have read about. And this is a true story. So back to Juan. It was a dark, wet February night. You know, the kind that chills you to the bone. It was the kind of night where most of us would rather curl up in a fleece blanket and put our feet up in front of a fireplace. Well, that wasn't what Juan was doing. No, Juan was waiting. He was sitting around and waiting, with his feet up on a coffee table, with a red bowl in hand, and his baseball cap drawn down low over his eyes. And the TV was on, and he was paying a little bit of attention to it, as were all the other guys in the room. But mostly, they were all doing the same thing. Waiting. To look at Juan as he dozed in and out of sleep, you'd wonder if this guy had a clue. At 25, he's a little bit too young to really get life. And then, quite suddenly, it's time. Because now, cutting through the hush of the night, are the ear-splitting alarms signaling that someone needs saving. It's a five-alarm box fire, and it's a bad one. Juan and his buddies move quickly into action, wasting no time now, and it's clear that, indeed, they actually do know what they're doing. The world is rushing quickly by as they barrel down the road. And the destination is clear. ECC has dispatched them to a duplex in Wheaton. No, Juan isn't going to an inn in Bethlehem, but he very well could be. Because the world is about to change. His whole world. And a little family's whole world. Nobody could have predicted at the onset of the night that tonight would be one for miracles. All seemed so calm and peaceful before, and now chaos seemed to reign. Firefighters poured out of trucks with lights glaring and sirens glaring, and hoses were strewn back and forth like heavy spaghetti noodles. And heavy ladders were thrown against the sides of a house as firefighters prepared to head in. Nothing about this night is serene, <laughs> or still, or quiet. And honestly, nothing about this night says Christmas. Or maybe it does. Because then, in the midst of the ruckus, the world does indeed stand still for one second. As the desperate pleas of a father's of a father land on Juan's ears. My baby. She's trapped inside. She's in the basement. And then the man was gone. And he's back inside to save his daughter, his only daughter who was four months old. And Juan knows now what must be done. The fire is a problem. But the child is the most important. Because children are always the most important. So in, 
It's time to save the baby. The house doesn't matter. Another firefighter found the father passed out in the house. The father, as much as he loved his daughter, he couldn't save her because the smoke and the heat had overcome them. And Juan's buddy dragged the father to safety while Juan searched. In a fire, smoke doesn't fill the room so much as it banks down on you like a heavy fog, trying to suffocate you from above. In the fire, it licks and rolls across the ceilings. A firefighter feels the heat before he ever sees the fire. So on the ground, below the smoke, it's cooler and clearer. It's not clear and bright, but there, low to the ground, Juan is able to function. He's able to crawl. Down here on the ground is the only hope of saving the child. I'm coming. I'm coming, Juan whispers under his breath. And his head probably echoes the same things as he's on his hands and knees. Damn, where is this kid? And there she is, in the crib, not making any sound. And Juan grabs her. And he hands her out the window to a man waiting. And he knows she's safe. Juan's back was burned, marking him forever. A little angel girl. She couldn't save herself. And she had no idea that danger lurked about her. But the Savior knew. He knew where to go. And he knew that the only way to save the children was straight down to the ground, on his hands and knees in the middle of a nightmare. The Savior knows that the place to be born is in the middle of a house that is about to burn to the ground. The Savior knows that the place to be born is outside to those who have been outside so long that they've given up on God. The Savior knows that a place to be born is in a manger where nobody will ever walk. And as I thought about this, I thought about the fact that the church is not going up in flames, that our heating is adjusted appropriately, and there is nothing here from which we need saving. And I remember briefly thinking that the last place on earth the Savior would be born on Christmas Eve would be in a church. I remember thinking it's too pristine in the church, but that's not true. Because we are like the little angel girl who was asleep in her crib, asleep in a place that should have been safe, in a church. Because sometimes we don't even know we need saving. Most of the time for us, things need to start going up in flames for us to take notice of the smoke and the heat. To take notice that all the ways we've been trying to save ourselves have been choking us and those around us too. And the good news is that the Savior knows that heat means fire before we ever do. You know, this past week, some of my friends asked me what my sermon was going to be about on Christmas Eve, and my answer was, Jesus as a fireman. Now, if this person happened to be a firefighter, you can imagine the sly grin that would cross across the firefighter's face, often accompanied by a, Oh yeah, baby. And I'd promptly return, don't let it go to your head. <laughs> because as shocking as Jesus portrayed as a fireman might be, God is a baby on his knees. At the mercy of the world is even more dangerous, is even more shocking, and is even greater love than a man barreling through. The God, of the, God, the God the world expected went up in flames on that first Christmas day when Jesus came to us in a manger.
and there you have the Christmas story. Except for God's last line to the story.